Chuck, we're back. Okay. And let's talk about spaceship heat shields. Yes. And do, do you know why they exist? To stop phasers from penetrating the ship's hull? <laughs> I didn't say... <laughs> I, I. That's a different kind of shield. Oh, my heat shields. Damn. Not, not phaser shields. Oh, man. <laughs> Damn. Oh, you don't want to hang around anymore. Okay. <laughs> Ordinary heat shields. Okay. okay. That you've always seen, you've heard about it, you've read about it. And do you know what they're for? Um, I would guess because it gets hot. So they're going to shield you from the heat. Okay. That's not their purpose. What? Yeah. That's not, that's not why they exist. Well, that's a very deceptive name. Then. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't thought about that. That's right. Yeah, that's an <laughs> extremely deceptive name. It implies that you're going to get hot and burn up, so you have to protect yourself from it, and so exactly. you put in these shields so that you don't die. So why is NASA toying with my emotions like this? This, because now you care, it, because the astronauts is living fleshy things inside the capsule. Right. Okay. So if it's not to stop me from burning up and dying, what's it for? Okay, so here it is, you ready? You need heat shields because any object in orbit is going, in, especially low Earth orbit, is going 18,000 miles an hour. Right. Okay? That's right. That's fast, so if you do the math, that's like five miles per second. Second, yeah. Eight kilometers a second, all right? So. That's fast. Well, if you're going that fast in any other situation, you'd put on the brakes, right? You would find some way to slow down. Well, spacecraft don't also carry fuel to slow down with. No retro rockets. Well, no retro rockets. Not, now they do. Well, no, not really. No. Well, well, oh. it depends. Wait, no, hold on. When they're coming back to Earth, no retro rockets. Okay. Still no retro rockets. Still no retro rockets. So, but you're right. It would be called retro rockets. So what if, yeah, I'm going so fast. Let me flip the engine the other way or point the nozzle and blow exhaust opposite the direction I'm going. That will slow me down. Okay. If we had that, that's all you'd have to do to come out of orbit is blow exhaust out the other direction until you have zero velocity pop a parachute, and then glide down to Earth. Yeah, uh, like like in a ship, like a, uh, all engines reverse, you know, and you see the propeller stop and go yes. the opposite direction. The, 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 correct, correct. Okay, that's all you'd have to do. But to carry the fuel that you're not going to use until you want to come out of orbit, you, that takes fuel to put the fuel that you're not burning. And so we said, we're not going to do this because we don't have to. Let's take all of this kinetic energy, this energy of motion, and let the atmosphere burn it off. Let the atmosphere sweep it away. So, we, they're called heat shields, but you know what they are? They're aerobraking. It's an aerobraking system. Aha. Uh -huh. You want this. Because you intentionally didn't bring fuel or brakes to slow you down. So you use air to do it. So what do they do? Here's the capsule in orbit, moving real fast. Okay. And it's set up in such a way that the bottom section, uh, it'll always sort of dangle with that coming first. And it's, it, it's this big blunt thing that plows into the atmosphere. The atmosphere is, I'm not going to want to let you do that, but I'm coming through anyway. Yeah, it's not aerodynamic at all. It's, it's totally not. Well, it's, it's aerodynamic in that it's not going to be turbulent. Um, right. th it'll stably come through. But, right, you, are, you want to maximize this resistance. And in so doing, you heat up the bottom side of the craft. Where does the energy come from that's heating the bottom of the craft? The air friction. I know, but, and, okay, what was the original source of that energy? What do you mean? The, it was your the, speed of the craft. See, oh, that's right. The craft itself fl flying in at 18,000 miles an hour. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. We got to get rid of that energy somehow. So, 
Here it comes. All right, let us come down and work our way into the atmosphere. And in the upper layers, there's not as much air molecules, but there it is. And you get sort of shock waves and friction and all manner of other sort of communicating molecules. All right, and that speed becomes heat energy. The kinetic energy becomes heat energy. Now, if it only becomes heat energy, that's not good enough because then you'll still burn up. You've got to whisk away that heat energy somehow. Mm, right. Okay. Mm. Send it somewhere else. Get it out of here. So in the old days, and even in many modern capsules, the, quote, heat shields are onion layers of burnable substance. Oh, so they are heating up and then they're peeling away. They're peeling away. So the so all the heat is <clears throat> actually like wicking, like moisture wicking. wicking. I like that. I like that analogy. You're wicking away the heat. And every time you do this, the thing is slowing down and continues to slow down. And depending on how much kinetic energy you have, add on a few more layers. Okay? When they came back from the moon, they re-entered the atmosphere at a higher speed than just coming out of low Earth orbit. So the, the moon crafts coming back had more heat shield layers than the other spacecraft. Wow. That's, so, by the way. It's aerobraking. That that's that what is it is. ingenious. It is com and it's blunt, and it's low tech, and it worked every time. I don't know who thought of that, but that guy should have got a donut. <laughs> I'm telling you, <laughs> that's is that or the, a parking the, the, space. The reward? He should have got something. <laughs> he should have got a parking space because that is. Says the New Yorker, where parking space is highly valuable. <laughs> somebody, somebody was really thinking. I mean, yeah, yeah, and it works, and it and it works every time. So, so it's so it's. I think the the correct word is it ablates. Ablates. So you were saying whisking, it ablates. And so, and it, it goes away. And when you're done and you have low enough speed, then you deploy your parachute and you just dip dip in. That is genius. There is a sci-fi movie where they are in orbit around some planet. I think it might be Mars, but it's some planet. I don't remember which. And they're on some stable orbiting platform. But there's one of these platforms that sort of rotates with the rotating planet. Okay, and a guy falls off the platform towards the planet. And that's bad. And you see, and then he goes down, and then you see him disappear in a puff of smoke. No! 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 no. Just because you're entering an atmosphere doesn't mean you're going to burn up. Right. The burning up is not an inherent feature of passing through an atmosphere. The burning up comes from getting rid of the speed you had to maintain 18,000 miles an hour. When we landed on the moon, moon's got no atmosphere. Right. How do you get a soft landing there? Can't use a parachute. Can't use aero braking. They needed retro rockets. Got to have retro rockets. Yeah. Yep. There it is. Mars has a thin atmosphere. So that one had parachute, big parachute, plus retro rockets, plus aero braking. All three to get the rovers on Mars. Or you drop a trampoline. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Well, I'll, I'll bring that up at the next NASA meeting, okay? Chuck, <laughs> Chuck Nice says trampoline. <laughs> <laughs> Why did it take us five days to land on the moon? <laughs> Yeah, if it's a perfect trampoline, it will never stop. It'll never dissipate the energy. It'll just keep right. bouncing. But you want it, it to, the energy has to dissipate somehow. It'll heat up the springs. The energy can't just disappear. It has to transmute it to some other form and then get whisked away, as you said. So you should, I think you should always think of heat shields as aero braking systems rather than, oh, you need this, otherwise you'll burn up. No, you need it, otherwise you'll crash. That's so cool. And That's really cool. Oh, and uh, in the movie 2010, ostensibly the sequel to 2001, they came to Jupiter and they aerobraked around Jupiter. They had some really good uh, visual effects for the day. And, to sh and they're inside the craft, they're saying, oh, wow, this is, uh, I wish I could see this from the outside, this aerobraking. Basically, any spacecraft with heat shields coming through an atmosphere is aerobraking. Anytime. So that was not some new thing. It was portrayed as some new innovative concept. But of course, we do that all the time. In fact, there are spacecraft that come into Mars and their orbit is highly elongated. 
that's a, high, uh, that's a higher energy orbit, and they want to sort of circularize it. So when it dips down closer to the atmosphere, it makes sure that the atmosphere slows it down a little bit. That eats some of the energy, and you can circularize an orbit on purpose that way. So they just kind of like skipping rocks. Skipping rocks. I like that. I like that. That's cool. So there you go, Chuck. Uh, think of it as um, error breaking, not heat shields for the future. Very nice. Do you not try it. this on Earth. That's all I can say. <laughs> Please don't try this on Earth. But that is a really cool concept. And if you fall out of your spaceship and, and fall towards a planet, right. uh, if you die, it won't have to be because you burned up. Right. <laughs> It'll just be because you hit the planet. <laughs> hit the planet. Right. Either way, that dude was going to die. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jack, Jack, uh, my co-host. Always a pleasure. All right, Neil deGrasse Tyson, as always, keep looking up.